Good afternoon everyone, I'm Dave Woods and this is Catapults and Coffee. I'm the owner of course of Five Cent Survival and if you have seen the other two episodes you have an idea of what we do on this show. I like to just discuss different topics in the slingshot shooting world, uh, mechanics on shooting, how to improve your accuracy, different aspects of owning and maintaining a slingshot. Uh, so today I want I will gonna show you a couple new products that I've come up with since the last episode and then I'm gonna discuss a couple little things um, That for your shooting that can help you dial in your accuracy and fine-tune that grouping and get you down to real small tight groups uh, So that if you want to go hunting you can do that or if you know Maybe you just want to do some fun trick shot videos. We can get you down there and get your accuracy really tight so for starters, I'm going to show you a new product I've come up with. Uh, last year, I designed these custom ammo magnets um, that match slingshots. Uh, I, I, when you order a slingshot from me, you have an option to get a matching ammo handled ammo magnet. Um, and these have been really popular. Uh, in fact, they've been so popular that a lot of people have started copying them. Um, so I wanted to come up with a new design, uh, both just to have something different, um, and this one is more oriented for speed shooting and quick reloading. So along the same lines as the bad fish that you have seen in the other episode, uh, so that it's a personal defense knuckle, this also is a personal defense impact tool. It's called the Guardian. And it is a open hand or open open cut two finger impact tool, but it also has the same two inch neodymium magnet on there, so it holds a lot of ammo, and it keeps them right there, so for easy reloading, it's right right there in your hand. You just roll it off and load it in the pouch. Um, so these are really good. I think they're going to be a hit. You can get these right now for $50. You just message me on Instagram or Facebook and uh, we'll pick out your color, your finish, whatever, and we'll get you one going. Um, so that is the Guardian. That's a new product. Um, I've also finally refined this new slingshot design. This is called the Herdsman. It's based on the old Little David catapult. Uh, it has the same exact handle shape. Um, with a two inch fork gap and seven eighths fork tops. It's the same fork width as my Phoenix design, um, but the support area is a little more rounded and the, as I said, the gap is two inches instead of inch and three quarters uh, like the Phoenix. Um, so that's the two newest designs I have, um, you can check those out on my Instagram page for the most up-to-date, most current products and listings. Uh, you'll find those on Instagram, but you can also message me on Facebook and I will get them and I'll respond. So and let's get into some shooting tips for you guys and hopefully help you get your accuracy dialed in. Um, a lot of people, when you're new to shooting, they will just kind of pick what they have learned right off the bat uh, from whoever taught them, whether it was on a YouTube video or a friend or whatever. Um, and typically when we teach people, we will start people with a what's called a face anchor, uh, which is when you draw, you want to find somewhere, whether it's the corner of your mouth, your nose, your ear, something where you can reference with your finger or your thumb so that every time you draw you know you're in the exact same place. I personally when I draw the end of my finger when I'm holding the pouch the end of my finger right there is sticking out so I stick the end of that finger right there in the corner of my mouth. So every time when I draw now this is with I'm, when I'm using face anchor I use all different kinds of draw lengths but with face anchor I draw and I put that right in the corner of my mouth so I know it's in the exact same spot every single time because there's a lot of variables in slingshot shooting and that's one that you can control and you want to do that as best as possible. 
um, so that if you have your same anchor point every single time, you have good alignment in your elbow with you want to make sure it's basically a straight line. So when you draw, you should have an imaginary line drawn straight to your target. And you can see where if I raise or lower that anchor point, it affects the shot downrange. So you're going to have to practice with that. Depending on what height you reference with your anchor point, is going to change where you reference your frame on target and where your shot hits. So keep that in mind also, but play with it. Uh, if something isn't working for you, you can move your move your anchor point around. Try, also try different draw lengths. Uh, the cool thing about slingshot rubber is depending on your shooting style or the draw length, you can send the same size ammo with a short face anchor draw, or I can go to a much, much lighter, much thinner band with a much lighter draw weight, and I can go to a full, what's called a full butterfly draw, where I'm all the way out like this, and I can send large, you know, heavy hitting ammo that I would generally need like a 0.7 or up to one millimeter even uh, band for hunting. If you learn how to shoot a longer draw or like I said, full butterfly, um, you can get away with a much lighter draw weight. And one reason I like this is I have a little bit of a shoulder injury from snowboarding a few years ago. So I can shoot a lot longer, a lot more comfortable with a shorter, with a, um, sorry, with a lighter band set that I can use for, for a, you know, semi or full butterfly draw. Uh, so play around with it. Um, try different, my biggest recommendation in slingshots is try everything. Keep experimenting. I'm always trying stuff. This blue, for instance, this is just a uh, exercise band. This isn't even a slingshot specific rubber like this Precise or or GZK or something else I might have. Uh, this is some stuff it's that I picked up at TJ Maxx. You know, I'm always trying different stuff. Lots of times it's junk and it just ends up going in the recycling bin. But this, you know, occasionally I get stuff like this that works really well. Um, <clears throat> so just experiment. Get yourself a cutting mat and a cutting wheel and all that stuff and start making bands, try different stuff. Um, you know, you, you'll be surprised what you might find. Um, so that's, and let's go back to discussing full butterfly for a minute. Um, I get a lot of questions or a lot of comments rather about people, especially guys that are kind of new to the slingshot world. And, um, you see people shooting, you know, even, even a longer draw, a lot of people don't want to go from a from a face anchor. They won't want to pull to a longer draw because it's kind of it, a little scary at first to have that ammo whipping by your face. But um, if you if you understand that the ammo can only travel in a straight line, and so as long as you have proper alignment with your arm and your pouch, and when you release it, it can only go this way. So. You know, if you're close looking down the band, if you're close and you release that, that ball's not going to come up here and hit you in the head as long as your form is correct. So, um, obviously I would recommend when you first start, you want to just without a, without ammo in it and just stick your finger in the pouch, um, without any ammo in there, um, just so that you, you're not pinching it so it won't. It won't slip out because you don't want to dry fire and mess up your bands. Just stick your finger, your thumb in there and draw it and just kind of get the feel for it and see how it feels. And um, just get, you know, look down the band and get your form down. Get used to lining lining your bands up and, and referencing and, and just see how it feels. Do that a bunch of times. And then I would say when you start, um, I recommend really, really light bands and like 
maybe quarter inch steel. Uh, just that way because the smaller ammo is affected more obviously by the, the pull of the bands and it's going to resist less. So whereas a heavy like a 3 8 it may take only a little bit to deflect that shot you know as far as your pouch if your pouch is just a little off with a 3 8 it's going to uh, it's going to respond a lot more extreme where a quarter inch if if your pouch is a little bit off if and your, or your release isn't perfectly clean because it's lighter and has less mass it's going to fall into line and straight a lot easier so start with smaller ammo but there's another reason for that uh, for when you're really wanting to improve your accuracy, smaller ammo is a good choice. Um, if you're really wanting to shoot super tight groups or really small trick shots, really small targets, I recommend uh, either quarter inch or five sixteenths steel. Um, the smaller ammo in a controlled environment, not we're not talking about in high wind or anything like that, but in a controlled environment, smaller ammo is going to fly more consistently and make you a more accurate shooter because a smaller projectile, and this is the same with rifles or whatever, a smaller projectile in a vacuum, obviously, uh, is, is has less um, drag coefficient, so it's going to fly straighter. So... I recommend quarter inch, like I said, quarter inch, five sixteenths. I've lately, I've just gotten, I shot quarter inch only for like two years. And now lately I've, I've moved on to five sixteenths, which is also eight millimeter. Um, it's also 30 caliber, I think. Uh, so, but this is, I really recommend you get more speed with the smaller ammo, um, tighter groups, and typically it's cheaper. So you can get a lot more bang for your buck as they say and the last thing I want to talk about is pouch pinch and release so this is going a little long so I'm going to try to do this kind of quickly but uh, when you are pinching your pouch and the ammo uh, the most common first way you're probably going to learn is thumb up and um, you know face anchor like I said but there are other other methods. Um, if you are going with a, if you're new to, if you're new to butterfly, uh, a lot of guys I know actually will shoot use the same you know thumb on top for butterfly for for whatever. Uh, I tend to when I'm shooting butterfly, I switch to a thumb down um, because it's actually you know if you stick your arms out your thumb down is more natural. And so for me, I get less hand cramp when I'm shooting full butterfly if I have my thumb down and uh, and I tend to have more control and I'm more accurate that way also. Um, and so this is one thing I want to, just a little tip. I learned um, last year, I think, I was after the fire and we were getting settled. I wasn't shooting very well. And I couldn't really figure out why. And I felt like a lot of it was in my in my release and in my pouch pinch. So I started doing something that, and this really helped me get tighten my groups back in and uh, get my accuracy back. And so what I did was, when I draw, like I said, I will put my finger right there in the corner of my mouth. So I started to um, to keep it from ramping up. If you if you are low or if you tend to pull your thumb back and let your thumb off first, you're going to send that shot high. It's going to ramp up. So what I started doing was basically when I get to my anchor point, I would just so slightly just move my index finger back like I was squeezing the trigger on a rifle, just like you would do on a rifle. You so just slight and smooth so that it surprises you. And what I found was just that little bit, instead of ramping it up, it would actually bring that shot back down just a little bit and helped me consistently, instead of trying to make a perfect, even release on both sides, it gave me a more finite pulling the trigger release. 
and really helped. So try that out. Uh, if Maybe it'll work for you. Maybe it won't. It's just another tip. But either way, get out there and shoot something. Have fun. Shoot safe. Get a friend involved. Get out there and do some can racing, whatever. Uh, it's just a great sport, guys. The weather's been awesome around here lately, so I'm going to get outside and shoot a little bit. And I hope you can too. Thanks for stopping by. Again, my name is David Woods, and this is Catapults and Coffee. Hope to see you next time. Have a good day.